when you're doing Google ads, you're basically just riding the coattails of everybody else's marketing dollars. So you're getting the best leads from everybody else's marketing. If you can cut your cash conversion cycle in half, you can triple the revenue that the business does. And, and learning how to really uh, dial in those metrics and then reverse engineer is how you build a successful wholesale real estate business. Guys, I'm sitting here with someone who's helped wholesalers get 50 million in acquisitions in wholesale real estate and someone else who's helped wholesalers sell billions in wholesale real estate. I'm really excited for this masterclass series, guys. I've got Rob Wensley and Brandon Bateman. We're gonna do a round table masterclass series all about one specific marketing channel. I mean, we'll cover a bunch of other things, but we're gonna really do a deep dive onto Google Ads pay-per-click, this, this mysterious strategy that the top wholesalers in the country all implement. I think everybody at some point as they progress in their, in their business, they almost everyone I know of transitions into PPC. So we thought it'd be super valuable to help you really learn the ins and outs and how you can start to master the strategy of PPC. So Rob, it's awesome to be here with you. I love hanging yeah, out. We're doing all kinds of stuff. Out. Appreciate it. Yeah. Brandon, thank you for flying down here to Puerto Rico to come That's kick it here. with us. And yeah. We got the ocean literally like right here. It's yeah. fun. New investor lift office just yeah. opened this week. Yeah, uh, I'm really, cool. really glad that we're doing this because like the, the whole business model we've kind of really mastered with our investor lift clients. So we got the top guys in the country, guys that have hit a million, even two million a month with very small teams, right? Like dozen or less people. And the whole business model, I always tell people, is really simple. You run Google ads to get the leads, you close them, and you sell them on InvestShop. That's all we do. <laughs> Stupid simple, right? You're like, oh, how do you do that? I'm like, this is it. Like, it's very simple. Um, but you see the big guys do it, and they have a lot of success, but a lot of people get in, they might spend 10, 15, 20. I've heard people spend $50,000 on Google ads and not get a single deal. I mean, Google will take your money. They will, 100%. <laughs> So I'm super glad that you came in here because you're probably one of the top, probably the, the, the most well-known, at least in our space, all our top guys all use you to manage the Google Ads. And what I want to do today, or I'm hoping we're going to do today, is demystify Google Ads, uh, teach everyone how it works, uh, show what the top guys are doing, like what makes people successful on Google Ads, what makes people fail on Google Ads. And at the end of the series, everyone has an understanding of how it all works, how to be successful, how to avoid failure, and can go and implement it in their business and take their business to the next level. Yeah, this is gonna be much like, uh, hopefully like the series you and I did, Rob, which was like, how do you scale to a million dollar a month real estate business, where we kind of broke down all the mechanics of that. We're gonna try to do something very similar with this series with Brandon. And I think, first of all, Brandon, I think what would be really helpful is just to kind of help people really understand the, the big picture of PPC and why that is such a powerful, uh, marketing channel in wholesale real estate. Yeah, I think um, there's a lot of people who love PPC. I think I think Robert, you said it's a little bit polar. Right? It's a love hate. People, people have love like it. these awesome experiences, and then they have these kind of rough experiences with PPC. Um, and what I think there's is missing in this industry is the understanding of why. Yeah. You know, why do some people succeed on such a high level? A when, lot of unrealistic expectations too. Mm -hmm. People think they'll throw a thousand bucks at PPC and yeah, they'll get yeah. twenty deals. Yeah. You know, yeah, because you assume if I do what the bigger companies are doing, maybe I'm going to have success. But I think a lot of it comes from understanding how PPC really fits in to to the world of marketing. Uh, the way I picture it, you've got like over here, you have like outbound, outbound channels, right? This is gonna be like your door knocking, your cold calling, your texting, maybe realtor outreach, yeah. whatever it is. Very, uh, very time intensive, um, but cheap, yeah. right? Over here, you've got inbound. And that's where PPC falls, for example. Um, so the difference here is outbound is you're going to people and inbound, they're coming to you. And, and I want to make a distinction here because some people would call like direct mail, for example. They would say that's an inbound channel because people are calling you. Yeah, I usually consider it inbound. It's not. I call it right in the middle because okay. you sent them a postcard. Mm -hmm. They responded to your postcard yeah. and came to you, right? So that's that's. So like you still reached out, but then they're responding back. Yeah. yeah. yeah so that's, that's why PPC is so popular because it's about as far this way as you can go. Yeah. This is people on a search engine looking. It's as if someone's going to their mailbox and they're looking for a postcard from an investor wanting to buy their house. <laughs> yeah. Very high intent. High intent. Very high intent leads. The highest quality. They've gone and searched something like how to sell an inherited home fast for cash. Mm -hmm. And that's way more valuable than if I'm just cold calling someone. Saying, well, you're, hey, catching you them, your you're catching them early in the process because you're calling yeah. them. Maybe they're early on in their foreclosure process, right? Whereas yeah. now they're calling the Google ad when their foreclosure is next Friday. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? The high intent happens with that inbound. I love a, uh, something I learned from you, Rob, which which really for me helped me understand it a whole lot better. It's all about who gets to ask the ask the question of um, what price do you want. So when you outbound and you say what price do you want, mm-hmm. the seller gets to say, "Well, you called me." Right. All right. So that puts them in the driver's seat. When they call you and and the and the topic comes up about price, you get to say, "Well, you called me." Yeah, completely different. I mean, dynamic. whoever gets to say that gets has the has the control, gets the deeper yeah. discount, right? And, and the beautiful thing is with that high intent, like the last time an investor of company broke two million a month, we did it with just seven guys on the team. Seven guys, people thought we had like a hundred people in the office. We're like, no, seven dudes. Yeah. Because we knew that we would close one in 10 leads from Google ads and we just try to get 10 leads a day. 10 leads a day would give us one, one deal, deal a day. day. We would make $50,000 per deal. That's $250,000 a week, four weeks in a month. Yeah. million dollars a month. So it's just simple math. It's very easy for a very small sales team to handle 10 leads. Now, if we had, if we're doing outbound prospecting, we would probably need 40 or 50 people yeah. to do the same amount of revenue. So people say that Google Ads is more expensive. It's more expensive per lead. But if you look about the total amount of time it takes you, the total amount of resources, the total amount of people um, and effort that it takes to do a deal, yes, it's capital intensive up front, but the total when you look at the total cost to do a deal, my argument is it's a lot less expensive in the long run uh, once you got everything dialed in and are doing it at scale. One thing I, uh, I did an analysis recently of a collection of P&Ls within the industry. Um, and these were all companies doing significant volume, um, call yeah. it three to $500,000 a month, um, some of which were very heavily outbound driven yeah. and some of which were very heavily inbound driven. Um, okay, this is very interesting. It is, it is. Um, Believe it or not, net margins, pretty similar across the board. What the difference was is the marketing, like ROI is the thing that people use. Like how many dollars do I get out for what I put in on inbound channels was actually lower than it was in outbound channels. However, the operational expense was higher on the companies that had outbound channels. Yeah, so that's kind of what you just explained. Yeah, yeah bigger so, team. So the ones that were inbound, they had a lot less headaches, a smaller team. They still could get to the net margin that they wanted and they just had a larger marketing bill. Yeah. Um, and and this, these are generalities, right? Because could you have a higher net margin on inbound than outbound? Yes, it depends on how you do it, right? Yeah. And that's what we're going to talk about in this whole series is how do you master this on such a high level that you're going to um, do exceptionally well as a business? Yeah. See, that's interesting you say that because my experience has been like with all my wholesale partners is um, our assignment fees are just way bigger with inbound than they are with outbound. Like we average maybe 10,000 is like a high assignment fee with a text cold call or agent model. But like inbound, that's where you hit the 40, 50K deals is on the inbound leads. It could be though that you're doing a lot of realtor outreach, right? And the problem with doing realtor outreach is they've already priced it. Well, yeah, they've but, but, but that's price. what I mean on outbound. I'd say outbound with outbound 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 outreach is different than outbound still, with Yeah, outreach. I agree with that. So you'll do better in normal cold call and text without realtors from a deal spread standpoint, but PPC is still usually higher. But yeah. I think bottom line though, I think what you did there looking at the net profit margins of the companies is brilliant. I love that. That's, that's ultimately all insight. we care about that's at the end ultimately of the day. All we care about. Yeah. But like Jerry, if you were to run, you had an option to be a CEO of two companies. One, they both make the same margins. They both <laughs> make the same amount. Employees? One has 50 employees, one has 10. Seven, yeah. Seven. Oh my Which gosh. one do you want to run? Li- well, I'm very lifestyle driven, so yeah. clearly less employees, yeah. 100% all day long. So that, that that is super interesting. I love that you did that. Anybody who's ever been there would answer the same. Yeah, <laughs> that makes that makes a real. Sometimes it sense. sounds good until you get there. To yeah, have a lot of employees, yeah, it's not, no, it's not. I mean, no one wants to wake up and say, "I can't wait to go to the office and manage my fifty employees." Like, no. <laughs> I don't yeah. think so. Yeah, keep it small. Absolutely. So, so that's the value of it. I, I can give another example of this. I just had a, a call with a client recently where they were showing me this this house um, that they had purchased. So, this house was in their neighborhood actually. So they would, where they lived. Yeah. Where they lived. They would drive by this house, like on their way to the office all the time. And it was like the most stereotypical driving for dollars house you've ever seen. Run down. Extremely run down. So they cold call it. They texted it. They door knocked it. They did all this stuff like over and over and over again, because they actually really liked it because it was on this lot that was on the water in the neighborhood. And they're like that house, if it was rehab, that would actually be a really nice house. Um, it's just, it hasn't been cared for. Um, so anyways, they can't, 
they can't seem to get it. This is like over six months that they're doing this. Then one day through PPC, they get this phone call and they talk to the person. <laughs> From the neighbor. I knew that's where you were going. Yes. Yeah. So, so they talk to this person and they actually realize like, yo, you're the owner of that house. Like we're neighbors. <laughs> they he called notice. him. Yeah. Wow. He inbounded on an ad. Yep. And they end up buying the house, they end up rehabbing it, and now it's their personal residence. Wow. Um, so it was a, like our clients did over 2,400 deals last year. That's my favorite out of the, the 2,400. Um, but it's, it's an interesting story that illustrates the point that we often think that the way that sellers are going to find the companies they do business with is the me whatever method we found them through before. Um, but everybody has their own way that they're going to find the company that they're going to do business with. And more and more, it's Google. Yeah. where they're going to find those those companies that they do business with. Turns out what someone types into Google is more predictive than almost any other point as for predicting their future behavior, right? Yeah. Like before I came here, I probably searched something on Google about like flights to Puerto Rico, mm -hmm. places to stay in Puerto Rico, et cetera, right? And that says more about me coming to Puerto Rico than anything else yeah. that I That's have nice. in terms of data points on, on my life that any company could access. So I think it's a, I think it's a really interesting point. And we've seen the number of people going to Google and searching these kinds of things that show that they're a motivated seller has tripled in about a, the past four years. Wow. So okay. more and more people the are coming The volume has online. tripled. Yes. That is incredible. Now, okay, my question is why? I have a theory. I have I'm a curious to hear. Okay, Jerry, what do you think? I have some theories too. Well, I think, um, I mean, it's all a comparison to other channels, right? So. If you think about, maybe this isn't where you're going, but if you think about like texting and cold calling getting highly regulated, the carriers are getting smarter, just as far as effectiveness, it's getting harder and harder to be successful on those other channels. Whereas, you know, COVID happens. I mean, most everybody's online. And I think what the point you're trying to make is Google now has so much data. And if you know how to look at the analytics, we can predict what sellers' behaviors are going to be. Is that kind of what you're saying? Because we have so many data points on it what is. they're doing mm -hmm. that we've never had before. Now, so that's an interesting thought because the, the thought there, I think, is kind of that like, okay, maybe people are doing less marketing on other channels. Like they're doing less outbound. So as a result, those people that normally would respond to a postcard are now going and searching. My thought, I, don't think it's that I, have, yeah, I have a thought. I have a thought that the older crowd, because most people that sell to us, like we need deep equity to be able to mm -hmm. sell. And houses, if... If I'm a 25 year old and I just bought my first house, like that house is not distressed. Fast forward 25 years when I'm 50 years old and I haven't done my repairs, now it's distressed, right? So people are typically selling properties and in good condition. And they have equity so they can sell deeper. Yeah. yeah, so our motivated sellers are typically older, right? They're typically 40, 50, 60. Um, Cause that, I mean, that's the people that need our solution the most. And I think that that crowd is going more online. Like if you look at the Facebook demographics, Facebook used to be just colleges. It started off at Harvard, it was just Harvard. Now if you look at the Facebook demographics, the Facebook demographics are more, I think it's like, it's mostly older people. Baby it's mostly 50, 60 yeah. plus, and they're using Facebook to keep, you know, keep in touch with their grandkids, and stuff like that. Yeah. So I'm, I'm guessing, it would be interesting to look at like mobile adoption trends. I'm guessing it's just more people are getting smartphones and they're, the solar crowd is on their phone more. I, That's my theory. What do you think? I agree with you. I think there's also an aspect of the new old people are yesterday's young people, right? Yeah. So the more that happens, like everything that happens in real estate investing happens just like 10 years after it happened in the rest of the world. Yeah. Like you talk to most like tech companies these days or anybody advertising to like younger demographics, they like don't know anything outside of digital marketing, right? If you talk about yeah. like direct mail or cold calling, they think like, you're what? some type of dinosaur, right? right. So <laughs> it's just, it's just, following the trend. Yeah. Um, there's one other thing. So search marketing is intent based for things to be intent based. People have to know that it's an option, right? So mm -hmm. let's just give like another example, right? Let's just say some pharmaceutical drug comes around. And, and the reason pharmaceutical drugs are so popular with this is because, um, they tend to be some of the highest cost per click things on, oh, really? on Google. Wow. Um, so, so anyways, let's just say that happens, right? If nobody knows about this, is search marketing going to work? No, cause you're harvesting demand that already exists in the marketplace, yeah. right? So, if companies start running TV commercials for that and start having doctors tell people about that and all that stuff, what happens? You start to ha now have people go to Google to search for it, mm -hmm. right? So if you think of what's happened, like we're sending, in, as an industry, like more direct mail than ever, we're doing more cold calling than ever, texting. There's iBuyers now yeah. who are normalizing this idea of buying a house for cash 
is a normal thing that you can actually have yeah, a lot of people, for. A lot of people don't even, like when I, I remember, I, okay, I agree with this because I remember when I got in the game and I was explaining the business to like family members up in Canada or whatever, they were like, wait, you can do that? You can sell your house for cash as is? Like I'll, I'll, there's a huge segment of the population that doesn't even know that that's an option. What you're saying is with the new iBuyers coming in with more marketing going out, now more people are just realizing that the, the word cash buyer is now a mainstream thing where mainstream. it never has been before. Yeah. yeah. So if you know it's an option, you can search for it. Yeah. And when you're doing Google ads, you're basically just riding the coattails of everybody else's marketing dollars. Yeah. All those postcards that they sent to people and people put on their refrigerator and reminded them like, I can buy, I can sell my house for cash. Mm. But then one day when they're looking to do that, because Google is where we find so many of the solutions that we have these days, that's, that's where true. they go. That makes yeah. sense. So you're getting the best leads from everybody else's marketing. It's true. If you think about it, if I hear something on the radio or I get something in the mail, I'm going to Google if I'm interested in that and see yeah. what's going on. You know, I, I know that uh, here's another, I'll tell you another funny story that kind of supports this Siri. I used to be in charge of sending our direct mail and we'd send over a quarter million postcards per month. And then what we do is after we drop the postcards, we drop the money Tuesday, Wednesday, because that's when you get the best response time. And then we call them Thursday, Friday, and we'd reference the postcard. Like, hey, I'm calling because I sent you a postcard. Just want to make sure you got it, right? So now you're getting two touch points in a week. I forgot to send the mail one week. None of the postcards went out. And we did the calls. It was a brand new list. The list had never been hit by us ever before. Brand new list had never been hit by us before. The response rate on the campaigns was exactly the same. <laughs> it was exactly the same. People were like, oh, yeah, yeah, no, sorry. I got your postcard. I just haven't had a chance. Because everyone was hitting the same list. Yeah. And so we just got rid of the direct mail. Because <laughs> someone else and was We just mailing. did the calls yeah. and referenced the postcards and we never sent the postcards. We That's saved ourselves funny. so much money. Usually yeah, yeah, your, cash way con- your cash conversion cycle. Is it, this is huge. Most people do not understand the impact of this. We talked business. about this. Talk about how important this is because now you're doing more deals over a given time period. Yeah. So there's only two numbers that matter in a real estate wholesaling business. Number one is return on ad spend. For every dollar we spend on marketing, how many dollars do we get back? And number two is cash conversion cycle. How fast do we do that? When we plug a dollar into marketing, how many days does it take before we return a profit from those dollars? Now, a lot of people are fixated, fixated, fixated on how much they're making per deal. But if you look at the volume, you gotta look at, instead of look, being stuck in the deal, what you gotta do is like get out of the trees and look at the forest and look at like what would the numbers be on an entire business over an entire year. And if I've modeled it out, like what happens when you cut the cash conversion cycle in half? If you can go from 60 days between when you spend the money and you get the money back down to 30 days. Technically, you make twice as much money. You're making the, the same amount per on the deal. Spend, on the marketing. The total volume, the total revenue your business can do in a year doubles, but it actually more than doubles. I'll tell you why. On each cash conversion cycle, you earn a profit, right? I plug a dollar in, I got five to $10 back. What I do with that is, as a business owner, I'm going to reinvest a percentage of that back in growth and allow my marketing budget to grow. So when we cut down the cash conversion cycle, as we cut it down, um, I've modeled this out and like a, a lot of businesses, if you can cut your cash conversion cycle in half, you can triple the revenue that the business does. That's it's, how the math works. So it's not a one to one, it's a one to three growth from it's just huge. from your shorter cash conversion. Just, and now cutting in half is a, is a lot, but just shaving a few days off matters, matters hugely. When well, cutting in half is, is really fleas- feasible if you're talking it about is. something if you like go from outbound flipping, to inbound. Or even or flipping. like flipping versus yeah. wholesaling yeah. or something like that. Like that's, well, that's even, why people Even do cold it. call to PPC. I mean, you're going to go from months of a cash conversion cycle on typical cold call versus 30 days, 45 yeah. days with PPC. Which is absolutely accurate. And you'll find people that will tell you with PPC it's like three days. In my experience, they're horrible at follow-up. 
So you don't want to be too focused on this because a lot of people are just focusing on how, you know, how, how short can I get this, which often means you're not doing a good job at closing those leads from three months or four months ago. Because you still have follow up. Because you'll still get those, right? So you'll yeah. see at the beginning that you'll get some deals from, from leads that come in pretty yeah. quick. Um, but then over time, that, that amount of time, like it's wider and wider. But yeah, I worked with a lot of companies where, you know, it's 30 days on average for PPC and then 60 for direct mail and then 90 for cold call. Yeah. That's, yeah. Those are pretty 90 on cold call would be good. I, I think it's even longer. North of 100 is what I'm seeing on most yeah. companies. Yeah. Um, but 30 to 60 on Google Ads is like, it's like, that's pretty standard. Yeah. So like, Definitely. we're literally talking one sixth the cash conversion cycle. One sixth. Now we just talked about how cutting it in half can triple your revenue. Imagine if you cut it back to one sixth. The impact that that can have on your business like it's a it's a completely different so, business so the point is is you don't just look at the dollar spend on the ppc you have to look at the whole picture you have to look at how everything's affected by your different marketing channels yeah and what we're talking about here applies to any business too it's not just real estate investing it's not just wholesaling any business in any business those are the only two numbers that matter and in any business if you do this math and you apply the same strategies uh, you'll have the same effect. Well, what's fascinating to me is like, you know, I've been doing wholesale real estate for 20 years now. And just in the past few years with tools like Investor Lift and just so much, so much advancement in technology that there's so much predictability now where we can almost, we have metrics now and KPIs where we can almost know with some level of certainty and accuracy what it takes to build a, a million dollar business in yeah. wholesale real estate. You know, we don't have that in flipping because every house is different, every rehab is different. There's no way to really automate or systematize flipping to a certain extent, right? Because every house is different, but not wholesale real estate. It's, yeah. and, and learning how to really uh, dial in those metrics and then reverse engineer is how you build a successful wholesale real estate business. 100%. Or any business, like any business, you gotta be running it by the numbers. Like these guys here, these sales guys, I know what they sell per hour. Yeah. And if they take a week off, I know exactly how much that's gonna cost me. When they book a week off or two weeks off, I know down to the hour how much each one of them sells. And if they're gonna take a week off, I know exactly how much it's gonna cost. And if their numbers go down and their dollars per hour sells, sold goes down, I know within five minutes exactly why yeah. is an activity base is it like i know exactly because you're tracking your metrics out. everything yeah. is tracked when you when you have your kpis all dialed in it's really simple to look at a business and say here's your breaking point here's where you're breaking down let's now we can go in here and and work on that like we do that with with my wholesale partners we we look at their metrics every single month and and then it's like okay here's where we need now we can come in and support you in this area or yeah. that area and that's what google ads allows us to do better than any other market channel. You, you, you can't get attribution like that on TV. You can't get attribution like that on radio. You can't get attribution like that on direct mail or texting or calling. Yeah, on Google, you can track everything to a T where exactly it came from. Um, and not just that, if you work with the right partner, you can get a lot of data of what those things should be. Yeah. So we can, we can look in for any of our clients and, and see, tell them like you are, because people make, they like to make up problems yeah. that they have. <laughs> like, oh, I, I have a three X return and I wanted a five X return and it's because my cost per lead is too high, but then you could break it down. You could say, well, you're contacting 60% of your leads. Average is 82%. Yeah. That's your problem. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It, everyone wants to blame the lead. I mean, it's so easy to blame the leads. Oh, the leads suck. Like every sales guy automatically wants to say, oh, the leads suck. Well, cause, cause they can't possibly be, a it can't be them. Yeah. yeah it's, it's gotta be the leads, right? <laughs> it's so easy to blame that, but is it really the leads? And now with the right KPIs, we can really take a look at that. Love that. Awesome. Well, guys, this is kind of our intro video to this series. We're, the main thing was we hope we want to, our hope was to get you excited about PPC and and uh, really want to learn this kind of mysterious marketing channel. Uh, I think like a lot of things, we tend to overcomplicate certain things in real estate. Like I love what you said. It's like, you know, PPC, get a contract pop it on investor lift, know where the buyers are, done. Like, why are we overcomplicating this? And that's so easy for us to do. So we wanna hopefully take this, this marketing channel that tends to be scary for a lot of people, mysterious in a lot of ways, like I don't know what we're doing, and then help you kind of get your head around it and feel really good about this strategy and some tips and strategies, best practices to really do it well. 
So on the next video, what's, what's our topic on the next video we're gonna do? Uh, we're gonna talk about budgets. Um, so how do you know when it's the right time in your business for this to be a fit? A lot of the negative press that PPC gets is from people doing it that shouldn't really be doing it in the Not first ready place. yet. Yes. Good. So that's the we'll number one question I get about PPC. When should I start actually spending the money on PPC? Right. So I'm super excited for that video. Yeah, stay tuned. We're gonna deep dive into that. And guys, we're gonna also put some information in the description below. Brandon's got some really good toolkit resources and some things that we're gonna give you for free and also information on how you can learn more about PPC. So be sure to check out those links in the description below. We'll see you guys on the next video.